I am a survivor of forced child marriage. I was forced into a marriage at the age of 15 by my father. Um, I was 12. My parents and the people in the church around me told me it was God's will for my life. I was forcefully married to a 43-year-old man who had sexual assault charges pending, and I gave up my freedom for his. I had my first child at 15 and three by the time I was 22. The trauma of that child marriage has followed me my entire life. I was taken from California to Las Vegas to be married, and I escaped. Se llaman Elizabeth, Sarah, Mandy, Genevieve y Kathy. Tras mucho tiempo calladas, han decidido contar su historia para que ninguna niña más pase por lo mismo. Estamos en Burbank, a las afueras del norte de Los Ángeles. Esta ciudad ha decidido mostrar su apoyo a quienes luchan por proteger a las niñas del matrimonio infantil. Según la ONU, cada año se casa a 12 millones de niñas menores. Pero, ¿quién iba a pensar que Estados Unidos figuraría en esta estadística? Entre 2000 y 2018 se celebraron allí 300.000 matrimonios con menores. El 86% eran niñas, la más joven tenía 10 años y la mayoría de los maridos eran adultos. El matrimonio infantil sigue siendo legal en 40 de los 50 estados. Y los argumentos de la oposición política dan mucho que pensar, como en este reciente debate en la Asamblea de Missouri. You voted no on making it illegal for kids to be married to adults at the age of 12 if their parents consented to it. You said actually that should be the law because it's the parents' right and the kids' right to decide what's best for them to be raped by an adult. Okay? Do you know any kids who have been married at age 12? I, I, I don't need to. I do. Uh, And guess what? They're still married. I've heard you talk about... En Estados Unidos se apoya abiertamente el matrimonio infantil. Mientras que en Missouri se ha votado fijar el límite de edad en 16 años, cinco estados siguen sin tenerlo, entre ellos California. Algo inaceptable para la presidenta de la coalición de California, partidaria de acabar con el matrimonio infantil. For a state that claims to be a thought leader and most advanced in the country, Its budget is bigger than some of the countries in the world. And for us to not even have a floor limit and allow child marriages at the age of 10, 12, 15, is quite shameful as far as I'm concerned. I, Nick Schultz, Vice Mayor of the City of Burbank, on behalf of Constantine Anthony, our mayor, recognize the... El vicealcalde de Burbank muestra su apoyo y el de todo el ayuntamiento convencido de que California, habitualmente progresista, debe enmendar este terrible retroceso y proteger a las niñas. So thank you all for being here. Um, when I'm not here at City Hall, I actually work as a prosecutor at the Department of Justice combating human trafficking. And you are, you're all absolutely right. California is a hotbed for human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most effective tools to traffic children. Yeah. And it's high time that we do something about it. Yes. Sara y Mandy, que han ido a Burbank a declarar, se autodenominan supervivientes del matrimonio infantil. Antes de que cada una se dirija a un lugar distinto de California, tienen un momento para ponerse al día. Mandy tenía 12 años cuando se comprometió con un chico de su iglesia evangélica. Sara se casó con un desconocido en un solo día, estando de vacaciones en casa de su padre. Ella tenía 15 años y él 28. When my daughter was born, like something changed in me. I was 16 years old. Um, I was still a, I was still a little girl. And I would see kids my age and they were walking to school and I'm like, I why can't I do that? I want to go to school and I got pregnant again and and I love both my kids but they were not by choice and it was like it felt like another nail in my coffin and I, I didn't know how I was going to escape. I'm very grateful for where I am because it could have turned out so much worse, you know? And also, as you said, to advocate for those who don't have the strength. Because I look back at that point and it's like, what if I just gave up? What if I just yeah. went inward and just accepted my fate? I don't even remember that girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm still 
still looking for that for that girl. Yeah. You okay? Oh yeah, I'm very good. Más del 80% de estos matrimonios acaban en divorcio y en dolor. Y para estas jovencísimas mujeres, con su recién descubierta libertad, comienzan también nuevas batallas que deberán librar solas. It's a continuous process of unpacking the trauma. And for me, I was a single mother at 23 of two children, very young. And I had to now navigate a world that I had no idea about. And I did end up homeless. I lived as a homeless person for six months trying to get housing for me and my children, trying to fight, trying to survive. Entonces, un título de cocina ayudó a Sara a mantenerse a flote. Hasta que pudo volver a la normalidad y rehacer su vida, poco a poco pasaron 10 años. La religión no es la única razón por la que se casa a las niñas. A veces se debe a tradiciones extranjeras o a la miseria social. Elizabeth Seaton pasó su infancia atrapada en una comunidad sectaria. Ahora, a sus 56 años, vive en Los Ángeles y se ha propuesto escribir su historia. Para ello, regresa a donde se la recluyó y donde se la casó, bajo coacción, aunque legalmente, a los 15 años. It's just really traumatizing and emotional to go back to this place that where so much happened. But uh, it's for a good cause, you know? I mean, we have to stop child marriage in America. Elizabeth quiere volver a ver el Murrieta Hot Springs, un fabuloso complejo hotelero que volverá a abrir sus puertas en 2024. Ahí es donde pasó su adolescencia. Por aquel entonces, era una secta dirigida por su padrastro. My heart's racing a little bit. That's where the wedding happened, right there, in that building. Okay, let's do this. Ready? Hi. I used to live here. We just wanted to see the, the property. No, we're not allowed to let anybody through except those who are working on the property. Okay, Thank so you. how do we exit? Uh, you can just make a U-turn up over here. Okay. Okay, well, this is it. You can see it really quickly. That's the building that I was living in when they tortured me, right there. That is the place. It's called the California Building. Yeah. I think we should just try to go that over there. Unos 200 miembros de la secta vivían tras esas puertas. El gurú prohibía a las mujeres hablar con los visitantes. Elizabeth, rebelde, nunca olvidará cómo su vida cambió a los 15 años. I was discovered in the in a darkened um, dining room area with my uh, boyfriend that was secret. We weren't allowed to have relationships and uh, they would bring me to their staff meetings and They called me a witch and a whore and they tortured me in front of 150 people and nobody stopped them. And then they basically said, You're, um, the only way that you can become part of the community again is to get married. El marido elegido tenía 28 años y ella consiguió convencerlo de dejar la secta tras cuatro años. En Irving, al sur de Los Ángeles, esta mujer ejerce presión política. Riman Asashibi asedia literalmente a los representantes electos. Ha fundado una ONG para combatir el matrimonio infantil, el tráfico de personas y las violencias machistas. Recent research indicated that we had 23,588 uh, child marriages in the state of California and 300,000 on a statewide level. Rima ha quedado con Coty Petri Norris, diputada del estado de California, que presentará un proyecto de ley para prohibir el matrimonio antes de los 18 años. We can park here and we can go. Y la batalla aún no está ganada. En 2017, un proyecto de ley anterior no salió adelante, pero la oposición no vino de quien cabría pensar. Quien se oponía era la poderosa asociación Unión Estadounidense por las Libertades Civiles, junto con Planificación Familiar. 
basándose en el derecho fundamental de todas las libertades, incluida la del matrimonio. Su postura no ha cambiado. California es uno de solo cinco estados en la nación. One of only five states in the nation with no minimum age for marriage. Right. Um, and I think that that uh, overwhelming progress that we're seeing made across the country is putting more pressure on California to act. Their opposition before was, if you're saying children can consent, Republicans are going to use that to roll back abortion. Right. But it's enshrined now in the Constitution, so I don't understand. I don't understand either, because there's a lot of things... There's a lot of things we tell 18-year-olds they can't do, right? But like I said, I really think that there is an opportunity for us to get this done next yeah. year. Rima Nasashibi es una incansable luchadora de la causa. Cuando no está en las oficinas electorales o los ayuntamientos, da charlas en iglesias, mezquitas y a jóvenes en institutos y universidades. Hoy va a hablar en la Facultad de Enfermería de la Universidad Estatal de California. I, I wanted first to ask you, uh, when can you vote? <laughs> when can you sign a contract? 18. 18. Uh, when can you go into a tanning booth? Also 18. <coughs> And when can you drink? 21. Uh, everybody knows that one. <laughs> <laughs> But you can get married at 11. Now, how shocking is that? What I'm saying is, we want to prevent them because some, yes, they love each other, they want to get married, but most are coerced. And so you can't say freedom of marriage. You had a comment? When you think about how, um, how different genders are raised, your little boys are taught like, you're going to be the man of the household, you run the household, emotions are weak, and then females are taught to be the peacekeepers of the family, complicit, yes. passive, And then when you have that society built on that, it's definitely where it starts too. You're absolutely right. La clase enviará un formulario al delegado que exige el fin del matrimonio infantil en California. Activistas de Golden State unen fuerzas con la esperanza de que su estado sea el próximo en salir del grupo de malos alumnos que no protegen a los menores. Otros 35 estados han empezado a legislar parcialmente, pero aún no han conseguido imponer la edad mínima de 18 años. Es el caso de Indiana, un estado del medio oeste del país. Desde 2020, la edad mínima para el matrimonio se ha elevado a 16 años y se han aplicado medidas de seguridad, como un límite de diferencia de edad de 4 años entre las dos partes. Desde entonces, los matrimonios infantiles han descendido más de un 80%. Genevieve Meyer ha desempeñado un papel fundamental en este logro. Es otra superviviente. Dirige la coalición para poner fin a las agresiones sexuales y a la trata de personas y colabora con todos los servicios sociales y judiciales de Indiana. Hoy se incorpora Sasha Taylor, también superviviente y exanalista del FBI. Juntas han ideado un nuevo plan de formación, único en el país. Identifican a menores en riesgo de comunidades extranjeras, donde los matrimonios infantiles suelen pasar desapercibidos. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sasha Taylor. Um, I was forced into a forced engagement, then a forced legal marriage to sponsor a visa, and then a forced religious marriage. And all of this happened La escuchan trabajadores sociales, de servicios de menores y del programa de víctimas de trata de Indiana. Mediante su propia historia, en una familia de origen pakistaní, Sasha explica cómo funciona la trampa con las niñas. And says, is this okay with you? And I'm like, is, is what okay with me? I still remember. My grandmother was standing here. My mother was standing here. And I look up at them. I said, wait, what, what's happening? And they go, mm, quiet. And then she puts the necklace on me. And then everybody started hugging each other. And that was it. And that's how it happens. We have no voice, no choice. And I, I went quiet for many years. 
I'm 15 years old. And so I just want to give you a picture through my example of what girls go through and why they don't speak up. En dos horas de formación explica distintas ceremonias tradicionales, los principios de los crímenes de honor en la familia, las lagunas en las leyes de inmigración que conceden visados de chicas muy jóvenes. Una información muy valiosa para quienes trabajan con jóvenes. So I want to challenge all of you in this room to continue this conversation, to take a look at your screening tools, your intake forms. Is a question on there? What age were you first married? Simple as that. En los próximos meses, Kathy dirigirá la formación para otros grupos del estado de Indiana. Esa misma noche se reúne en su casa con sus dos amigas a las afueras de Indianápolis. Kathy es madre de una tribu de siete hijos. Los tres mayores nacieron fruto de su primer matrimonio, celebrado cuando ella tenía 14 años en una iglesia fundamentalista. So that's Dom, that's Yvonne, that's Adam, my oldest son, Jessica, Bella, my youngest bio, that's Lena, the baby, and Levi and Jake. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I was 36 when I became a grandma. Paige. Todos se han independizado y cuando se divorció de nuevo hace un año, se dio cuenta de que era la primera vez en la vida que vivía sola. En su comunidad religiosa, convertirse en madre y ama de casa a los 14 años era la única opción. Kathy creció con miedo al mundo exterior, que era diabólico, y bajo el control de su marido, que era adulto. No culpa a sus padres que se casaron a los 16 y 17 años, pero ha necesitado toda una vida de terapia para acabar con las dinámicas de traumas transmitidas entre generaciones. I thrive now because that's my choice. I'm not letting that hook me back there. I'm not letting that trauma. And I'm, I'm committed to doing that for myself and for my children and my grandchildren, especially my daughters and my granddaughters. It's, it's hard. It's hard to face your own darkness. And I'm not going to do that by denying that there was times I was a crappy mom because, <laughs> because of whatever. Like, just, I just was because the trauma you just, there's no, no child, no girl needs to be a mom at 15. En su nueva vida de soltera con 60 años, Kathy muestra en varios podcasts la resiliencia que por fin ha encontrado. Fort Wayne es la segunda ciudad más importante de Indiana, cuya ciudadana de honor no es otra que Genevieve. Reside y trabaja en Fort Wayne y el tesón de su compromiso con los servicios sociales y la protección a la infancia se refleja incluso en las paredes. I mean, it's quite the honor, you know, to be acknowledged um, for the contribution and the work that we've done. Really, it's a community effort. So just reminding, you know, when people come together, you can do amazing things. And it's also a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's pretty neat. La misión diaria de Genevieve es detectar a los más vulnerables, ya que de niña sufrió todo tipo de abusos en un contexto de miseria social. Un vecino de 43 años abusó de ella y su madre la obligó a casarse con él para que no fuera a la cárcel. Tenía 15 años y aún le duele que nadie la ayudara. Se las arregló sola para salir y después, desde hace 15 años, cuenta con la ayuda de Nick, su segundo marido. I, I feel really bad for her. Mostly it's just my anger and rage for all the people who could have done something. I got kids and if anyone ever tried, you know, they wouldn't be walking. <laughs> Siempre que puede, Genevieve litiga con los electos de cada estado. Para ello, debe reunir fuerzas para recordar su pasado más oscuro. I do not enjoy providing my testimony, but I know how important it is. It's difficult every time, and you pour out the most painful and difficult time in your life to a room full of strangers, 
and some of them care and some of them don't. Sometimes when I'm like, I don't want to do this, um, it depends on kind of my emotional capacity of what I'm going through. Like if my teenager's making my life miserable, you know, I kind of pull back a little bit. <laughs> De momento, Genevieve afina su estrategia para volver a enfrentarse a la Asamblea de Indiana con un nuevo objetivo. Ni una boda más antes de los 18 años. Volvemos a las áridas tierras del sur de California con Elizabeth emprendiendo el camino de sus recuerdos, trazando una larga línea recta hacia la vecina Nevada, donde su padrastro la llevó a casarse a los 15 años. We were in a motorhome, we're driving this road, and they were playing cards, and they were making it like a fun trip. And I was looking out the window, and I was feeling like I was being taken to my death. You know? Elizabeth no localizó con facilidad la Candlelight Wedding Chapel. La capilla de las bodas a la luz de las velas cambió de sitio y se ha convertido en un museo a las afueras de Las Vegas. I just can't believe that it's been 40 years since my wedding and that it's now a museum. Okay, so it's over here. Wow, there it is. Oh my God, look at that. It's so bizarre. Smaller than I remember. Okay, let's see. Oh my God, wait, do you see this? Unbelievable. This is the place. Look at this. Oh my God. <sighs> we walked up here. I threw away the pictures because I didn't want to ever have to see it again, but I needed to see it. You know, I needed to see it. go I think it's okay okay let's go I pushed down a lot of the emotions over the years in order to survive and I didn't really feel it when I was in there as much but now that I'm out like I I just want to go find him I know he lives very close to this place my stepfather my ex-stepfather who was my abuser and who forced me into this marriage and I just want to attack him. I mean, like, that's how angry I am right now. I want him to know how much he hurt me. And I have his picture. And this is him, my stepfather, Jefferson Campbell. And he lives in this neighborhood somewhere. We have to find him. La única pista es la dirección que hay en la web de su padrastro. La dirección era falsa. Durante dos horas, Elizabeth dio vueltas para dar con su torturador sin éxito. Al menos por ahora. Los dos últimos estados que han legislado contra el matrimonio antes de los 18 años son Connecticut y Michigan. Aún quedan 40 estados en los que las supervivientes seguirán testificando para que todas las menores estén protegidas de los matrimonios infantiles. Solo así podrán pasar página en su dolorosa historia.